Hi, my name is Taryn, and I'm currently doing my student work placement at the South East Regional Centre for Urban Landcare, also known as Circle. And today I'll be chatting to you about the frogs of the Perth region. So what exactly are frogs? Well, frogs are amphibians, which are four-footed vertebrates that depend on external sources of body heat, and they inhabit a wide variety of habitats in trees, on land, underground, or in fresh water. Amphibians typically start out as larvae, living in water, but some species have developed behavioral adaptations to bypass this. The young undergo metamorphosis from an egg into a tadpole, then into a frog, with the majority of them needing to be in water to undertake this process. There are 31 species of frogs in the southwest region of Western Australia. 16 of those species occur in the Perth region. Eight are predominantly found on the Swan Coastal Plain and the other eight are predominantly found in the Darling Range Hills area. Seven of those 16 species sometimes overlap between these areas. That being said, there are 14 species of ground frogs, which can be burrows or above ground living. The burrows are generally characterized by their short, strong legs, which they use as a shovel for digging. The above ground living frogs are small, with short limbs and fingers, and toes that are long and unwebbed. There are also two species of tree frogs, also known as climbers. They have long legs and expanded discs on each digit so that they can grip onto smooth surfaces and their toes are webbed to help with swimming. Knowing this, it is important to note that not all frogs are green, not all frogs jump, not all frogs swim, and not all frogs say ribbit. In actual fact, the majority of the frogs found in Perth are brown, they don't jump or swim very well, or at all, and none of them say ribbit. These frogs are named according to how they move, where they live, what they look like, and how they sound. So let's have a look at the eight frogs of the Swan Coastal Plain. Here we have the Western Banjo Frog, the Slender Tree Frog, the Squelching Froglet, the Quacking Frog, the Moaning Frog, the Motorbuck Frog, the Clicking Frog, as well as our very unique Turtle Frog. In actual fact, the Slender, Moaning and Banjo Frog are also found in some parts of the hills, but are more typically found in the habitats of the Swan Coastal Plain. Next time you're in your garden, look out for the motorbark frog. It is a tree frog, even though it spends most of its time on the ground. It is also a good swimmer and climber. And although it's really good at camouflaging, you can identify it by its bumpy back and its call that sounds like a motorbike changing gears. This frog breeds in summer in more permanent water bodies, whereas all of the other frogs lay their eggs in or near water bodies that are present around winter. You can also find the moaning frog in your garden. This is a barring ground frog with powerful short limbs. You can identify it by its brown and grey back mottled in dirty white or light grey and its blue eyes. It breeds in late autumn by digging a burrow near the edge of the water. Males will make a long drawn up moan asking for the females to come down to the burrow to lay their eggs. The eggs will then hatch out when the water level rises and fills the burrow in winter. You can also look up for a very unique turtle frog which has a muscular build and short stubby limbs. It gets its name from its body shape, which resembles a small turtle with its shell removed. It is a barring ground frog that never needs to go near the water as it has no free swimming tadpole stage. That happens within the egg and when the egg hatches, it's a fully formed turtle frog. This frog also eats many termites and lives in the Banksia woodlands. Now let's have a look at the eight frogs of the Darling Range. Here we have the crawling toadlet, the hooting frog, the sand frog, the western spotted frog, the ticking frog, the whooping frog, the bleating froglet, and the humming frog. The crawling, sand, humming, and western spotted frogs can also occur in the Swan River Valley and suburbs close to the Darling Range. Most of the Darling Range frogs are ground frogs that live and breed in burrows in winter. When breeding, the male whooping, hooting, sand, western spotted and calling frogs create a burrow near a water body 
and call to the females to come and lay their eggs. The tadpoles will hatch out when the water level rises in winter and fills the burrows with water, allowing the tadpoles to swim out. If you're in this area, look out for the whipping frog. This is a large barring ground frog with a stout body and short limbs suited for digging. It has a copper brown back and lays its eggs in a foamy mass in the burrow in autumn, and it makes a whoop like noise. The sand frog is a barring ground frog as well, with a robust brown to dark grey body and has short limbs. It lays its eggs in a foamy mass in a burrow in autumn as well and makes a high pitched trilling purr. Another one is the western spotted frog, which is also a barring ground frog and has white or yellow spots on its chocolate brown body. Like the whooping and sand frog, it also lays its eggs in a foamy mass in a barren autumn and it has a noise that sounds like a short, high pitched coo. So, why are frogs so important? Well, frogs are very important to the ecosystem. This is because they indicate a species. Frogs have permeable skin through which air and water can pass. This allows them to both breathe and drink through their skin. What this means is if the environment is contaminated with pollutants, they can easily pass through the skin and affect the health of the frog. So scientists look to them to see how unhealthy or healthy these environments are. Frogs also play a crucial role in the food chain as both predator and prey. For example, frog eggs provide food for leeches, diving beetles and other large water bugs. Tadpoles feed on algae, which helps filter and keep our water supplies clean, and they are also food for shrimp and dragonfly nymphs. Frogs are food for birds, lizards and snakes, whereas full-grown frogs feed on insects such as moths, grasshoppers, flies, crickets, mosquitoes and spiders, which means they also control our insect populations. So what is threatening their survival? Well, this includes the reduction in and degradation of frog habitat introduced fish species such as the goldfish and mosquito fish. Herbicides, pesticides and fertilizers can cause abnormalities in frogs. The chytric fungus, which infects the skin of frogs, destroying its structure and function and can ultimately cause death. Fertilizers may have considerable long-term impacts on our frog species, either directly or through modifying other variables such as pH and metal impurities. In addition to this, extra pressure by shifting rainfall and rising temperatures from climate change puts frogs at high risk of extinction. Especially since frogs are ectotherms, meaning they rely on the external environment to regulate body heat. So what can you do to save our frogs? Well, do not remove the frogs from the wild and do not touch the frogs either, as this is what spreads the cartridge fungus. This fungus has been linked to severe amphibian population declines and extinctions across the globe. In addition to this, you can join a conservation group near you and volunteer. You can also build a frog habitat in your own garden. If you would like to build your own frog habitat, here are some things that you need to know. To get started, Perth frogs will need to find a spot that gets shade in summer and light in winter. Once you've found that perfect spot, you will need a waterproof liner or a container to act as a pond. This also needs to have varying depths of water. You will also need a boggy area for the autumn breeding ground frogs. You can create this habitat by using rocks, logs and native plants for shelter, hiding areas and access. Sedges, reeds and rushes in and around the pond are important in order to biologically filter and oxygenate the water. This will also provide a habitat for our tree frogs and other water animals. Invertebrates as food sources for your frog are also important, but don't worry, they'll arrive on their own. Another important thing to have is native fish to control the mosquito larvae. And remember, frogs don't need to be imported. Just build it and they will come. Thanks for watching and I really hope you learned something about the frogs in the Perth region. If you'd like to find out more about how to build a frog habitat or would like any other information, head to our website at www.circle.org.au and to keep updated, you can also subscribe to our YouTube channel and like us on Facebook.